So to discuss more on Juan Guaido's attempt at securing international support, we are joined by Louis Lang from the ALBA movement in Canada. Hi, Louis. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. My first question to you. Can you tell us how social movements reacted to Juan Guaido's visit to Canada and the reception he would have gotten from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? Well, uh, our reaction to his visit uh, is the same as uh, when uh, his, his so-called ambassador was holding meetings here, uh, which is that we our reaction is based on the fact that uh, he's not the uh, he's not the democratically elected president of Venezuela, and we believe that it's the Venezuelan people that should decide who is their uh, who is their leader, and and the Canadian government and the U.S. government have no business telling the Venezuelan people what democracy is. It's the Venezuelan people to decide their affairs, and our movement, our organization is in solidarity with the rights of the Venezuelans to determine their own future. So this is the this was our reaction, and that's why we held a demonstration on Parliament Hill when uh, Mr. Trudeau decided to meet. Uh, this uh, false uh, imposter who is pretending to be president of Venezuela. And what would you say are some of the policies of Trudeau's government that are also being rejected by social movements? Well, uh, we think that uh, the, the fact that the Canadian government is uh, supporting the sanctions and the blockade against Venezuela is a hypocritical move. Mr. Trudeau keeps saying that Canada is a uh, country uh, based on laws. But the fact of the matter is that these sanctions and the blockade uh, are a violation of the Charter of the United Nations. They're a violation of the OAS Charter and the Vienna Conventions. And it's basically an act of war to, uh, to make the people suffer. The collective uh, punishment of populations, which is the end result of these sanctions, and in this case, the Venezuelan people, uh, this is, uh, we consider this to be a crime against humanity. And um, the Canadian people oppose this. And... Uh, this is why uh, in our solidarity with the Venezuelan people is to demand that the Canadian government uh, not support the U.S. sanctions and, uh, and, and withdraw from them and allow the Venezuelan people to uh, exercise their right to live in the way that they want. That actually brings me to this question. How would you describe the relationship between Canada and the U.S. as it relates to their interests in Latin America? Well, uh, the relationship between Canada and the U.S. Uh, is one of um, subordination. Uh, it's the U.S. policy that, that the Canadian government is continuously trying to implement, and uh, they do it blindly. Uh, like Mr. Trudeau claims that uh, Juan Guaido is the president of, uh, of uh, Venezuela simply because uh, the U.S. says so. And uh, he ignores the fact that uh, he was not elected uh, by any official in the National Assembly. He was not, uh, uh, he, he has no, uh, he, there was no democratic election by the Venezuelan people regarding the presidency. So uh, Mr. Trudeau is, uh, is, is simply following the international, the foreign policy of the U.S. government, which continuously tries to um, use its power in order to attack democratic constitutionally uh, constitutional governments in Latin America, uh, such as Cuba, Nicaragua, and of course Venezuela. These attacks are coming on a regular basis. And uh, the imperialist uh, uh, policy which is being followed is, uh, is, is simply being implemented by the Trudeau government blindly. So we're asking the Trudeau government to have a foreign policy based on rule of law and not based on what U.S. interests are trying to achieve in the Caribbean, which is to denounce the, which is to try to undermine the governments that are, that are, uh, are using their powers in order to, in order to, for the benefit of the people. Uh, Louis, um, it actually raises a good point and a good question. Why do you think Justin Trudeau is blindly following the lead of the U.S.? Because we have seen the United States actually, uh, you know, take certain measures against countries who would support the uh, legitimate government of Venezuela. Yes, well, you know, I mean, it's a, it's an, you know, the foreign policy issue is one aspect, but of course, uh, Canada is also uh, under the uh, control of the U.S. in terms of trade policy. So now Canada has to ratify the uh, new NAFTA agreement between Canada, Mexico and the United States. So there's a great deal of pressure that is put on Canada 
to be uh, to, to subordinate itself to the interests of the U.S. And uh, so, Mr. Trudeau, instead of uh, instead of speaking on behalf of the Canadian people, is simply is simply uh, uh, enunciating what the foreign policy of the U.S. is, and uh, he's also saying that it's almost uh, that the, it's ne necessary for Canada to be in this subordinate position with the U.S. in order for it to survive economically. So all kinds of pressure is put on Canada, and uh, this government has no uh, doesn't seem to have any interest in having its following its own independent policy and uh, trying to eliminate. Uh, some of the uh, bad effects that this policy is having on our economy and our and our own foreign policies and our own positions that we take internationally. And most recently, Juan Guaido has called on the European Union to broaden sanctions against Venezuela, which negatively impact his own people. What are your thoughts on that? And in particular, why should governments reject such requests? Well, uh, as I said earlier, the issue of uh, the, the U.S. sanctions is a very, very important issue. And uh, when sanctions uh, and uh, a blockade are imposed, like the ones that are imposed against Venezuela, and as well the, the stepping up of sanctions and, and the blockade of Cuba, these are, uh, these are what they constitute is a, uh, is a collective punishment of the populations. So the U.S. is, is using its uh, methods in order to tell the people that we're going to, we don't like the governments that are in power and we want regime change and we're going to punish you as long as you keep supporting these governments so these this kind of collective punishment of people is a violation of the united nations charter it's a violation of uh, all human uh, hu humanitarian uh, principles and uh, con it, it it actually constitutes i think an act of war and uh, so the that's why our organization, which is an anti-imperialist organization in solidarity with the people to have their uh, who are fighting for peace and freedom and democracy and their rights, they have to stand up against uh, these uh, countries, uh, sorry, against the U.S., who is trying to impose their own uh, uh, their own uh, form of governments. And uh, so, so this is a very important issue that is taking place. And I think that in, in the in the coming year. This is going to become even more important because uh, from the way Pomp Mr. Pompeo, the Secretary of State, uh, was acting in his last uh, visit in Latin America, it was clear that they intend to step up the uh, attacks against Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and now they're putting in place uh, their own government in Bolivia, and uh, the people are being persecuted uh, on the on the basis that the U.S. wants to achieve regime change in these countries. Now, you mentioned U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who recently made a trip to Latin America and some Caribbean, well, actually Jamaica. Only a few Caribbean leaders were invited, and in fact, the head of CARICOM refused to send a representative because she said it was an attempt to divide the region. What are your thoughts on that? Well, yes, uh, I think that uh, it's very important uh, that uh, CARICOM took that position because uh, what the U.S. is trying to do is they're trying to divide the, the countries uh, in order to be able to uh, push for their own policies. So uh, the, the, the actual uh, offensive against the, uh, against the Latin American countries, like, for instance, uh, this is what they did in the OAS as well, when they couldn't have their, when they could not win a, a resolution against Venezuela in the OAS, the U.S. got Canada to form the Lima Group, and uh, they're trying to do the same thing in CARICOM, where they don't. CARICOM has so far stood against uh, the actions of the U.S., and they've stood in solidarity with Venezuela and Cuba and other and Nicaragua. And uh, this is one of the reasons why Pompeo went to Latin America in or order to uh, to try to divide these countries and try to impose, uh, give the impression that he has support. And of course, it's not true. He doesn't have the majority of support. And, and as you point out, only a small number of leaders of the CARICOM countries actually uh, went, to, went to meet him. So this is, I think, uh, CARICOM is playing a very positive role. And uh, we hope that uh, they continue to, uh, to stand up for uh, take a principled position. Thank you so much for joining us and providing your thoughts on that recent visit by Juan Guaido to Canada.
That was Louis Lang of the Alba Movement in Canada joining us.